Overview. In this module, you will learn about dog health, nutrition, and basic first aid. This module is designed to give you a basic understanding of dog health, what is important, and what to be concerned and seek emergency care. This module is not designed to prepare you to provide veterinary care for your dog, but instead gives you the knowledge needed to be an informed pet owner and service dog foster and or trainer. Learning Objectives By the end of this module, students will 1. Recall required vaccinations and yearly tests, state recommended health tests and preventative medications in their timeline, 2. Understand the body condition system and the importance of body condition, 3. Explain emergencies, what to do, and how to check the dog's dehydration level, and 4. Recall toxic items and emergency situations. Learning Activities Required Reading Dog First Aid Miller Chapter 4 Socialization Checklist and Module Reading Quiz Routine Care, Vaccinations, and Preventative Medications Vaccinations given depend on which veterinarian you take your dog to. Core vaccinations that can be given are abbreviated DHLPPC, distemper, hepatitis, canine adenovirus 2, leptospirosis, parvovirus, parainfluenza, and coronavirus. Some veterinarians no longer vaccinate for leptospirosis. Distemper is a viral disease that is highly contagious. Hepatitis is a respiratory disease. Leptospirosis is a zoonotic, transmittable to humans disease that is carried in stagnant water, especially where other animals may have urinated. Parvovirus, or parvo, is a highly contagious, often fatal disease of the intestines. Puppies are most susceptible to parvo. Symptoms include vomiting, bloody diarrhea, loss of appetite, and lethargy. If not treated early and intensively, parvo is fatal. Parainfluenza is a respiratory disease that causes kennel cough. This disease is highly contagious and spreads rapidly through unvaccinated dogs living close to each other. Coronavirus is another contagious intestinal disease. Non-core vaccinations include Lyme's disease, which is transmitted by ticks. Lyme's is typically only vaccinated against in highly tick populated areas. If a dog contracts the disease, they may never show any clinic manifestations of the disease, while others will display signs of joint pain and lameness. Bordetella is a vaccine given to dogs that are often around other dogs in a kennel facility or at a dog park. This vaccination prevents the spread of kennel cough. Kennel cough is not serious, but is highly contagious. Dogs with kennel cough will have dry, hacking cough. Rabies vaccination is legally required by most states. In West Virginia, rabies is given for the first time at 16 weeks of age, boosted at one year, and then required every three years thereafter. Rabies is a highly deadly disease in do both dogs and humans. Veterinarians also test for heartworms yearly. Heartworms are deadly without intensive treatment. They are transmitted by mosquitoes. The heartworm test detects other tick-borne diseases, such as acrylicosis, Lyme's disease, and an anaplasm. Heartworms are prevented by keeping dogs on tick prevention and heartworm prevention every month. Some flea and tick preventatives are the Ceresto collar lasts eight months, and Advantix. Heartworm preventatives include HeartGuard. Triflexis is a preventative medication that protects against both fleas and heartworms. Yearly heartworm tests are required to renew preventative prescriptions due to the fact that, they, that giving preventative to a dog that has contracted heartworms can be deadly. Fecal exams are recommended for dogs that are around other dogs or areas where other dogs defecate. Fecal exams should be done at least once per year or whenever the dog seems ill. Fecal exams detect parasites such as roundworms and hookworms in the dog's feces. Heartworm preventatives should also protect against these intestinal parasites. Hearts of Gold service dogs are required to carry current vaccination records with them at all times. This is not a legal requirement, but a practice any well-educated service dog handler should adopt. Routine care, spay and neuter. Service dogs are required to be spayed or neutered prior to placement as the service dog. Neuter is sometimes used for the sterilization procedure of both male and female dogs. An oviohysterectomy, OHE, or spay is the complete removal of the female reproductive tract. The ovaries, oviducts, uterine horns, and the uterus are removed. A neuter is the corresponding procedure in male dogs in which the testicles are removed. Dogs are anesthetized for both procedures, however, the spay is more invasive than a neuter and requires more recovery time. 
Neutering can be done as early as 16 weeks of age. However, current research suggests that the procedure be completed after the dog is at least one year old. The sex organs contribute hormones responsible for growth and is thought that removing them while the dog is still growing may lead to joint problems later in life. For this reason, hearts of gold spays and neuters at one year of age or later. Neutering has many health and behavioral benefits, including reducing roaming and aggression in males, decreased risk of prostate and mammary diseases, and obviously no heat cycle or accidental, accidental litters. Contrary to popular belief, spaying and neutering does not directly result in weight gain. The dog's activity level may slow, which can indirectly lead to weight gain if calorie consumption is not managed proportionately. Routine care, grooming. While grooming needs may vary by breed of dog, there are several grooming needs that are consistent across breeds. For example, every dog needs to be bathed, nailed trims, their coat brushed, and their teeth cleaned. Some dogs need baths more often than others. As a general rule, dogs should be bathed once every three weeks. Bathing too often can reduce the dog's natural oils and lead to a dull coat or skin irritation. It's best to choose a gentle shampoo, such as an oatmeal-based shampoo. Some breeds of dogs, such as Chesapeake Bay Retrievers, are very sensitive to shampoo and bathing due to their skin makeup, so bathing should be kept to a minimum. Long-haired dogs often get tangles in their coats, called mats. They are exasperated when they get wet. It's best to allow a groomer to bathe dogs with long coats to avoid issues with matting. Mats can become severe enough to cause skin affections and pain. Long-haired dogs will need brush more often than dogs with short hair. It is recommended that dog that long-haired dogs like golden retrievers are brushed thoroughly every day. There is a correct way to brush a long-haired dog to ensure that the undercoat is getting brushed. This prevents matting in between grooming appointments. All dogs require periodic nail trims. If a dog's nails become too long, they can grow into the pads of their feet and or cause joint problems. Some dogs will need their nails trimmed more often than others, but in general, every two to four weeks is necessary. When trimming a dog's nails, it is important to know what you are doing. If you cut them too short, you will cut into the quick, which is painful and will cause the nail to bleed. Keep a styptic product on hand to help stop bleeding if this occurs. Read here to see instructions on giving nail trims. All dogs should also have their teeth brushed at least once every day. Most people don't think about this, but it is a very important part of dog health. Dogs' teeth get tartar buildup just like humans and can cause gingivitis, tooth loss, and even infection that spreads throughout the entire body. Brushing a dog's teeth is easy with specially made toothpaste such as CET enzymatic toothpaste that comes in a dog-friendly flavor like beef and poultry. The, tooth the toothpaste itself is enzymatic, so just getting the toothpaste on the teeth will help break down tartar. Using a brush is more effective than paste alone to reduce and prevent tartar buildup. Providing dogs with the hard chew toys and feeding a larger size kibble can also break up tartar on teeth. A dog normally expresses their anal glands naturally. However, sometimes they need help. This varies drastically depending on the dog. If the dog consistently needs its anal glands expressed, adding some fiber into the diet like canned pumpkin can help. If your dog's anal glands need expressed, you will notice that your dog is dragging his or her bum across the floor or otherwise paying more attention to that area than normal. A veterinary technician can express anal glands quickly. This may need to be done every month or so, depending on the dog. Routine care, feeding. There are many opinions regarding what food is best for dogs and quite a bit of science behind it. The main issue is that dog food is not regulated heavily and so what is put on dog food labels is misleading. The general recommendation is to look for food with meat as the first ingredient listed. This may be a meal byproduct such as chicken meal or whole meal. Ingredients are listed from the highest percentage to the lowest, so if meat is the first ingredient, then the food is mostly made of meat products instead of fillers. The Association of American Feed Control Officials, AFCO, regulates the sale and distribution of the animal food. It's a good idea to look for dog foods that have been tested by AFCO procedures. Some foods may state that they are formulated to meet the nutritional levels established by AFCO. This is also acceptable. Most of the difference in pet foods are marketing strategies as opposed to based in science of health of the dogs. For example, some companies produce a different type of dog food based on the dog's breed. There is not indicated that different breeds of dog require different nutritional profiles. See link below for more resources regarding pet foods in AFCO. Dogs should be fed twice per day. Puppies are usually fed three meals a day. In general, dogs can remain on puppy food until they are one year of age, at which time they should be switched to an adult food. 
Some thin breeds of dogs, such as German Shepherd dogs, can remain on puppy food longer. Most dog food labels include a recommended amount to feed daily. These are only suggestions. The dog's diet will most likely need to be adjusted based on the dog's activity level and individual metabolism. Obesity is a problem in our pets just as it is in humans. Pet obesity, especially during years of growth, can lead to joint malformations, pain, diabetes, and a shortened lifespan. Because of the stress placed on a working dog's joints over its lifetime, it's important to do everything possible to ensure their joint health. Keeping dogs lean is a requirement for working dogs. Most people think a healthy dog should look like it's actually overweight. See the image from Purina. A healthy dog should be a 4 or 5 on this scale. Their ribs are easily palpable, but not easily seen. They should have a noticeable abdominal tuck and waist definition when looking from above. Routine care, exercise, and socialization. Exercise is important for dogs' physical and behavioral health. Exercise needs vary by breed. For example, a Mastiff will require less exercise than a Border Collie. Young dogs should be, get plenty of low-impact exercise. Puppies younger than one year should not engage in high-impact exercise, such as running or jumping. Too much impact while the joints develop can cause trauma to growth plates and impact joint development negatively. Gradually ease adult dogs into strenuous exercises such as running. In general, dogs like Labradors and Golden Retrievers require daily exercise. At least one hour per day off-leash activity is required. Short daily walks are great for physical and behavioral health but are often not enough. One of the most valuable investments a person can make in their dog's well-being is socialization. Socialization is not merely exposure to novel things and situations but positive exposure. Between 8 and 16 weeks, the dog is less likely to be fearful, so this is the best time for intense socialization. Socialization should begin early and continue throughout the dog's life. Positive experiences with many different people, places, and things will reduce the likelihood that the dog will develop behavioral issues such as fear, anxiety, and aggression later in life. The socialization checklist is a great resource to use when socializing a puppy or adult dog. Routine care, medical emergencies. Dogs and puppies sometimes vomit and or have a diarrhea. This is not a medical emergency. Usually the dog will get better on its own in a day or two. There are some medical issues that require immediate care. Any traumatic injury such as being attacked, hit by a vehicle, or a fall from a large height necessities immediate medical care. Even if there are no outward signs of injury, the dog may be bleeding internally, which will be fatal if not corrected quickly. Obviously, any broken bones or fractures should be seen right away. Bleeding, especially excessive blood in the urine or stool, requires a quick attention. Any trauma to the eyes warrants a visit to a veterinarian. Heat exhaustion is another emergency which will be, we will learn more about later. If a dog is having difficulty breathing, its gums are pale pink, white, or bluish, or the dog suddenly becomes weak or collapses, it should be taken to the emergency care right away. If a dog repeatedly vomits and or has diarrhea, it is at risk for dehydration. A veterinary clinic can provide fluids and anemetic medications. Many dogs, especially puppies, consume items that may be dangerous, such as socks, rocks, and plastic. These foreign objects can cause tears or become lodged in the animal's intestines and become deadly. Gastric dilation vulvus, also called, gast called gastric torsion or bloat, is a medical emergency. Bloat occurs when a dog's stomach flips on itself, trapping the stomach con contents. The stomach fills with air that cannot escape. This can be fatal quickly. Most often, surgery is required to reposition the stomach. Dogs will bloat with, will be lethargic, may be trying to vomit, but unproductively, and their stomach will be distended. Bloat can be caused by eating excessive amounts of food, eating or drinking, and then engaging in exercise, or sometimes it just happens with no known cause. To be safe, it's best to allow a dog 15 minutes to rest after eating a meal. Routine care, vitals. How can we check to see if the dog needs emergency care if they are not obviously injured? There are two things you can look for, capillary refill time and skin turgor. Both check for hydration, which in most cases is the most dangerous part of illness. To check capillary refill time, simply push on the dog's gums with your teeth, then release. If the color returns within two seconds, everything is fine. If the gum stays white for longer than two seconds, the dog may be dehydrated and should be given fluids right away. To check skin turgor, 
Lightly pinch the skin at the scruff of the neck and pull upward into a tent shape, then release. The skin should quickly snap back to its original position. If the skin stays tented or is slow to return to normal, the dog may be dehydrated. Routine care, heat exhaustion. Dogs left in cars or out in extreme heat are at risk for heat exhaustion. Cars are very dangerous as a parked car on a warm day can reach 160 degrees in just a few minutes, even with the windows cracked. For this reason, Hearts of Gold prohibits our dogs from staying in a car unsupervised. On hot days, it is important to ensure that the dog has access to fresh water regularly to prevent heat exhaustion. A dog with heat exhaustion will be lethargic, pant heavily, become weak or even collapse. They may shake and have a glazed look, and their tongue may be deep red or purple. If you think your dog may be suffering from heat exhaustion, take them to a veterinarian right away. Routine Care – Degenerative Joint Disease Although not a medical emergency, joint issues are a major concern for working dogs due to the high-impact tasks they perform. Also, the common breeds of dogs used for mobility assistant worker, lab Labrador Retrievers, Golden Retrievers, German Shepherd Dogs, and other large breeds are at increased risk for joint issues. Hip dysplasia is a common form of degenerative joint disease that occurs in large breed dogs. Hip dysplasia is when the fem femoral head does not fit snugly in the hip socket, which can lead to arthritis, pain, and even lameness. Genetic and environmental factors impact the development of this disease. Allowing puppies to grow slowly and with minimal impact to the joints during growth are important environmental factors to prevent hip dysplasia. Routine care, toxic items. There are many items in and around homes that are toxic to dogs. Some more common ones are plants such as baby breath and poinsettias, alcohol, fertilizers, and antifreeze. Here is a more complete list. However, there are many more items that are toxic to dogs that, than what is listed here. Easter lily, English ivy, German ivy, philodendron, poinsettias, mistletoe, baby's breath, daffodil, holly, poison oak slash ivy, tomato plants, alcohol, antifreeze, arsenic, drain cleaner, fertilizer, insecticides, insecticides, mouse bait, varnish, bees, snakes, spiders, toads, wasps, carriers, carriers of rabies, raccoons, squirrels, rats, wild dogs, cats, and fox. Due to the difference in physiology between humans and animals, we must be very careful what we give our dogs. As a general rule, avoid giving human foods as several types of foods are toxic and or dangerous for dogs, including grapes, onions, raw fish, and cooked bones. Human medications should also not be given to dogs without a veterinarian oversight. Medications such as asamptophene laxatives and blood pressure medications are especially harmful. If you are unsure whether your dog has ingested a toxic item, there is a 24-hour poison hotline that can help, 1-88-426-4435. Cheat Lake Animal Hospital is the emergency veterinary practice in Morgantown. They can see emergency clients any time of the day or night.